Hello everyone and welcome to another vacuum review and demo from iBasiac. Well, today it's a Hoover Spritz we're going to be having a look at. This is a bagless compact cylinder vacuum cleaner at the lower end of the market, although the prices for this range from about £40 to £130, depending on where you buy it from and what time of year you buy it. I got this for, I think it's about £36 brand new. So I thought for £36 it's worth having a look at. I would not pay, I wouldn't pay over 50 for this particular cleaner. Now I've not done any real tests on it yet. What I'm about to do on this video will be the, for the first time. I've had a quick, you know, go with it, a quick whip round and I've not been overly impressed. There's some things I like about it, but there's quite a lot that I don't like. I like the fact that it's very compact. I like the fact that it's very light. Um, is there anything else I can say? <laughs> That's about it. It's compact and light. But anyway, it is, I would say that this machine is suited for a smaller home. Saying that because it only has a 5 metre cable length, which is pretty short, and a 1.5 metre hose. So, if you live in a big house, this is not for you. Unless, of course, you want a supplementary vacuum. If you've got your main upright, say, that you do your main areas with, and you just want a small cylinder cleaner for doing, say, the car, doing your stairs, doing the nooks and crannies that it's a bit inconvenient to use your upright on, then maybe, but we'll have to see. It's um, a single cyclone unit, quite an inefficient one, I would have thought. I don't know until I've done my full tests, but it just has a single pleated filter inside the bin. So when you're looking for a bagless vacuum cleaner, at the lower end of the market you tend to find the filters, you can see the filter in the bin, which means the filter is going to get dirty pretty quick, which means you're going to have to keep cleaning it very often. The more money you pay, on the whole, the better the filtration. So if you go up from this type of filter to a multi-cyclonic type vacuum, depending on the, the model and the make, you will probably get better dust separation and the filter will stay cleaner. If you want the very best dust separation, then you do have to go to, to a Dyson cleaner. That's what I found anyway in my usage of many vacuum cleaners but then you are paying a premium. But really, um, for my money, if I was paying, say, £300 for vacuum, I would probably looking, be looking at a German-bagged vacuum cleaner. I have nothing against Dyson. In fact, you'll be seeing a Dyson, or you have seen a Dyson, a new Dyson on my channel, and I will probably be getting some more Dysons because they have improved. But yes, as far as cyclonic efficiency goes, Dyson seem to have that sewn up at the moment because they did pioneer that sort of technology. They didn't invent it, but they improved on it. So, anyway, it's got a quite a small capacity. I think it's one and a half litres, I'll have to double check that. You've got your swivel caster at the back, two large wheels. Quite a comfy carry handle, I do like that about it. I like the fact the handle's on the top of the machine rather than having often you get the handle here. So it means when you are cleaning the stairs, it is quite light, so you can easily hold it in one hand and direct the nozzle in the other. You've got your standard foot operated on-off switch, automatic cord rewind. There is an exhaust filter here, it's just a black, a black foam filter that needs washing from time to time. Although that shouldn't get as dirty as the filter that's located in the bin, which will need more frequent maintenance if you're to maintain the suction of the cleaner. You've got a parking bracket, just one on this machine, so you can park the cleaner if you want to cause cleaning. So you can actually put one of the two, you do get two main floor nozzles with this, and I'll show you those in more detail and demonstrate them in the review of course. The bin is quite easy to take out, you've just got a bin release. Take the bin out, take it to your dustbin, press this button and give it a shake. Close it, pop it back in. But again there is a filter in there which I'll show you how to maintain that. In fact we'll see what the condition of the filter is at the end. Now I have used this briefly, so 
And let me see, you have to turn it. There's a little bit of dust in here, but not much. That's the pleated, so it's not spotlessly clean, but that's pretty clean. I mean, it's been used for 10 minutes tops. So, and here is the mesh filter that goes on top of the pleated filter. That does help to prevent any larger particles like the head, dog hairs and things sticking to the filter. So that's the filter clean. We'll see what it's like after my tests. I suspect that will be absolutely caked in muck. Now that fits on, you need to turn it into the locked position. And go lock. A bit tricky to do when you're on camera. Anyway, that's it. You line it up. I haven't put it in properly, so don't you don't you go making comments. I will make sure it's correctly located before my test, but it isn't at the moment. You do get a hose, of course, that does fit quite securely. It's quite a good seal on it, but it is a short hose. As I said, 1.5 meters. Hand grip with a suction relief valve on it, so you can reduce the suction when cleaning more delicate items like uh, curtains. You get a metal telescopic extension tube, but it's very, very short, this tube. It's hard to tell, there we go. It's hard to tell from the video, but I am having to bend down and, and well, put my back into it really, and I don't expect that with a cylinder cleaner. The old days of sort of being bent over and scrubbing at the carpet should be long gone. And with this machine, unless you're very, very short, which I'm not very, very short, I'm not exactly seven foot tall, but that's far too short for me. But anyway, it's a budget cleaner. It is if you buy it at the budget price, so I expect that sort of thing. I expect a short hose, I expect short mains lead, and I expect a short extension tube. Now here is, and I hate this nozzle, it didn't do too bad, this is the same nozzle on um, the Hoover A2 Idle that I demonstrated a while back, so when I saw that this machine came with this nozzle I wasn't best impressed. It did okay on very short pile carpet on surface litter, but it, well in fact I had to abandon the Idle um, demonstration, if you remember, because it clogged up so much I couldn't continue the cleaning with it. But anyway, that is one of the new HLAB carpet extra heads, uh, specific, specifically designed for low energy vacuums. But there's no, there's nothing on there to help with pet hairs. There's no brush. It's just got a squeegee in the middle and that's about it. I don't like it. But anyway, and here's the other nozzle. This is another HLAB. This is hard floor smart, this nozzle. This is a bit better. I think. It at least has, this is just for hard floors, it has a static brush at the front, a squeegee at the back, and for some reason they've left the thread pickers on, which would have been better, surely, on the carpet head, but, you know, I'm just a consumer, I don't design these things. So that, it does look very similar to a regular carpet and floor nozzle, but without the ability to raise the brush. In fact, here where this blanking piece is, you would have had a pedal. So it's basically just a revamped nozzle. I've got this nozzle, I think it was on the Hoover um, Teleos Eco G, which I found a very good vacuum. It has this nozzle, but it has a metal sole plate and it has the ability to raise and lower the brush, and I found that gave much better results. I do apologise if you can see things going from light to dark, it's just the fact. Being in the UK, it was bright sun when I started recording this, and now, oh, well, it's, it looks like snow or sleet. So, sorry about that. I, I'm sure you can still see what I'm doing. So, there's that. And the only other tool you get, which is another shame, but again, I expect it on a budget cleaner, is this very, very short, stubbly little crevice tool. There's nowhere to store it on board. So... It's just for doing your crevices down the side of your chair, but you won't get very far down. It's also got a little brush attachment, which flicks out there, but it's, I mean, it's very ineffectual. It's quite a stiff, small brush, tiny, tiny opening. 
I can't see that being very effective. I certainly wouldn't do my Venetian blinds with that. It would take so long. It's, well, I just don't like it. It's a good job. This, this was under £40, so, you know, I would not, if I've spent over 100 I would expect to get a lot more than this. I would expect at least a small furniture nozzle would have been nice, because there's nothing, nothing to clean your sofa with. You'd have to buy an additional accessory. You don't even get a turbo nozzle either with this model. But anyway, I believe there are spritz versions that you can buy that have a PEX turbo nozzle. This is part of the new range that came in after the EU limited the wattage of vacuums and introduced their energy labelling scheme. So it is, it's not 700 is it? Let me see, it's an, well it's an 850 watt motor so that takes me back to the 80s, late 70s, 80s, early 80s when that was about average for a cylinder vacuum and then of course the wattage started creeping up a thousand, eleven hundred, twelve hundred until we got vacuums 2400 watts which is ludicrous absolutely ludicrous so we don't need we don't need that much energy use to produce suction so there it is you know it's a nice looking little vacuum cleaner but we're going to have a go with it now I'm going to go into the kitchen first put down my muck on the kitchen floor I'll also do um, some dirt on the entrance mat as well but that is a very short pile and that is quite easy to clean so I will still be putting down a load of dirt in the living room on my sort of short pile carpet in the living room. I'll also be seeing how convenient it is for doing the stairs etc and uh, when we've done all the demos we'll see how easy it is to empty the bag well not the bag the container and we'll see how filthy the pleated HEPA filter and HEPA I'm a bit dubious about that claim. Many manufacturers claim HEPA filtration, but um, I wouldn't think that this filter in here would, would be very good. But anyway, I don't have one of those things. I think they cost a lot of money. I'd love one. If you see on some videos, they have these um, little air, par air particulate meter things that uh, measure how many particles are in the air. And uh, I've often seen it on Miele demos on QVC and our other videos on uh, YouTube as well, where they hold the tube to the exhaust vent of the vacuum and it turns to zero. I don't think this would be showing zero somehow, because I do think a lot of the fine dust will pass straight through that pore filter, straight through the motor, and probably straight out into your room. So allergy sufferers, I don't think this is one for you either. But on with the tests. No point in sitting about. I've got to get this plugged in, get me muck thrown about, and hopefully get it picked up, but... Well, let's just say I'm not hopeful that it's going to leave me a spotless carpet. But, wonders may never cease, who knows? Who knows? We might have a miracle today in this demo, but I doubt it. Right then, off to the kitchen where I see some rolled oats and couscous and sugar are beckoning me. They they want to be thrown all over the floor, so I'm going to do that just now. Well, you find me squatting down in front of this mess, a familiar sight to my regular viewers. And again, I've put down the same old suspects, which uh, in this case are rolled oats, rice, couscous. I've actually used brown sugar this time, bit of a change for you, uh, and flour. So we've got lots of different sized particles, the largest being, of course, the rolled oats, and the smallest particle, the finest particle, which is likely to clog the filter faster, is the flour. Now, this mat is an entrance mat. It's a very short pile, virtually non-existent. So I would expect even the worst vacuum cleaner to be able to clean all this up without too much trouble. I will go on to the hard floor just ahead of this mat, I've thrown down exactly the same dirt here as well. So once I've hopefully cleaned this up, I will change this nozzle to the hard floor nozzle and see how the Hoover Spritz copes with hard floors. But for now, I'm just going to go forward and back initially through the middle of this. Now I expect it's quite noisy, probably sound noisier on screen, on camera, but anyway, here goes. Let's see what it's like. <laughs> I had a bit of 
trouble. I'm a bit, I'm a bit squashed for space. I had a bit of trouble getting going because it wasn't very easy. So I think I might have gone. For, I might have done an extra pass. I do apologise. Not very scientific. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll do one pass. Well, two passes forward and back. I'll start here and I'll lower the handle. That's better. I'll try again on this section. <laughs> bad. This one managed to escape the cleaner this time round but it won't escape the next time. And it's managed often when I do that with some vacuums half the dust falls out and dust and dirt falls out again but apart from one more oat that thinks it's got away with it seems, seems to have got all the muck into the nozzle. It's done it quite noisily, hasn't it? It's quite a noisy vacuum, as one would expect at the budget end. But you also get noisy vacuums at the top end as well. Okay, let's uh, clear the rest of this up now. So there's no deep down dirt on this pile, it's not, it doesn't have a pile, so, you know, I'm not surprised that it's done well on this. If a vacuum cleaner cannot do well on this, then it's definitely not one I would ever consider, because this carpet is very easy to clean. Right then, I need to switch over nozzles now, so I'm going to take off the carpet nozzle and put on the hard floor nozzle, and we'll just see how we can cope with the mess I put down on the hard floor. Right then, so here we have the same sort of dirt, but this time on a hard floor. And I've switched the nozzle over and I'm now using the Hoover Hard Floor Smart Nozzle here. So again, I don't think I'm going to have much trouble cleaning this up, but you never know. Start at the back, we'll do one sweep through the middle, one sweep back. <laughs> Again, suffered from the old snow plough effect. And it's left, well it's left, it's not, well probably most of the oats actually, it has left. I shook them out of the nozzle. It's left some of the rice particles as well. It seems to have got all the flour. Um, I can see a little few grains of sugar. So the smaller particles it's done okay with, the larger not so good. This will all be picked up with the machine, it just means I have to tilt the nozzle of course to get the remainder of the dirt. So before we go into the living room and test it on the living room carpet we'll just clean up the rest of this. Everything. There's nothing, there's no grit. It's, it has got everything, I have to say that. But obviously I had to go over it, tilt the nozzle up a bit. And it does seem, let's have a give, give the nozzle a shake. No, it's, it's all inside. Now it's all inside the dust compartment. Let's have a look. 
So yes, it's, it's all in here. And of course, well, we can see it, can't we? We can just press this button here and see. Oh, I could, I could reuse that. I'll just pop that back in the packet. Nobody will ever know, will they? Seems quite clean. So that's fine. Yes, I, I think I'll reuse that. We don't have to waste it. A lot of flour stuck to there, and I suspect inside the filter there's quite a lot of flour. Let's just pop that back in. But before I go, I'm just going to, because there are some of you a little bit OCD and couldn't bear to, to think that I've left all this mess, so I'll just pick this up and then it's off into the living room. emptying my bag of filth onto the floor and added some wood shavings for good measure. So in this mixture of mess is uh, used SIBO Duo P powder to represent the dust. Obviously the wood shavings represent larger particles. Got a few other larger bits. Somehow a bit of a sweetie wrapper got in there. Bits of paper. This, most of this stuff is from a wool rug and there are so there will be dog hairs in here as well. Sounded like I said a rude word then back to me. Arse. <laughs> I said also. It, it, it might have sounded a bit wrong but I, I was meant to say also. Not what it might have sounded like. I might have to play that back see if it's... Uh... Oh anyway, you know what I mean. I'm not rude. So, you know, a lot of dust. Um, a lot of dust. This is what the downfall I put the lot on though. The SIBO powder was the downfall of the Hoover A2. It clogged up that uh, filter. Quick as nine pence. But there's, a, there's still quite a lot here for the Hoover spritz to cope with. So again in time-honoured tradition it's going to be, I'm good, doing it from this angle for a change, I'm going to go like that, right through the middle. And then we'll obviously be able to see how well it's done on two passes, one forward and one back. Cover your ears, I'm switching on. Right, <laughs> what I've already detected is a slight change in tone of the motor. As I was doing that it went slightly higher pitched which to me sounds like the filter is becoming clogged. I'm also getting an awful lot of electric shocks off this. I think I might do this in the dark next time and we can have a nice little display of all the static electric that's coming off this. I don't know whether it's the nozzle that's causing the static up the tube, I'm not sure. But this is pretty bad for that. But anyway, right, let's take the nozzle away and have a look. Oh dear. Now on camera that does look like... You can, have, you can see where I've been, obviously. The larger hairs, it's more or less, well it's rolled them up quite a bit, but it's all, it has left a lot of the larger bits. It's left some of the wood shavings, it's left a bit of paper there. But also, apart from the large stuff, which you, what you might not be able to see, and I can because I'm close, is it has left a fair bit of the fine stuff as well. So a deep cleaner, this ain't. Because there's still, there's still much. And don't forget, this is just surface dirt I've put down on this carpet. It's not, I can't, you know, it's very difficult to test with my limited means to test for deep down cleaning but to me if it won't clean the surface very well you can be sure that it's not getting deep down into your carpet I mean it's not a, a thick pile this carpet so there's not much pile to get into 
but if you have a thicker pile carpet, a denser pile, you want to know that your vacuum cleaner is getting as much of that dirt out as it can. And this little spritz, I think I might change its name after this video, sounds like spritz, it's got an S in it and a T, and an I. Oh dear. Anyway, I'm going to have another go forward and back, well a few times actually. I'm going to scrub away to see if I can make this path look a bit better. Right, now obviously that, if that had been the result after two passes, I'd have been very impressed. <laughs> to get that result, I had to put quite a lot of pressure down on this nozzle. Well, it saves going to the gym. So anyway, if you, if you can't afford a gym membership, you need a new vacuum cleaner, possibly this is the machine to go for. Because with its short extension tube, you're going to have to be bending. Because it's, it's not very effective, you're going to have to be pushing down on this. Really working those glutes, working your thighs, etc. Crikey. I'm pretty fit uh, for an old man. But that's a workout. I'm glad I don't have to use this vacuum all the time. Hello Molly. Are you coming to have a look? Are you hiding? Molly's, Molly's just off camera, hiding behind. Yeah, you don't like the noise, do you, darling? Molly, come here. Come and say hello to the, to the YouTube viewers. You're scared. Molly. Come on, Molly, boo. Come on, it's only vacuum. Come on, darling. Here she comes. Come on, Molly, Bob. Oh, we can see a bit of a come on. Don't be shy. That's your leg. Mm. You're a good little girlie, yeah? Yeah, you need a you need a haircut. She needs a haircutting. Eh, Molly, show your face. Oh, I can't. I need to angle the camera. Well, off you go then. Off your pop. Reverse back into your hidey hole. You don't like it, do you? She's back. <laughs> she's just oh bless her. She's back under the table, where the vacuum cleaner can't hurt her. <sighs> right, right then. Gonna do some more cleaning. And then I think it'll be time to have a look at the bin and the filters. Despite my constant scrubbing, I shouldn't really be kneeling down in this. I'm actually in the middle of all that dirt. There's still, there's still surface dirt here. <laughs> but I know I can tell that this filter is pretty clogged. I can understand why people return these vacuum cleaners to the shop with the excuse doesn't pick up. Because they won't if you don't clean the filter. Now I put a lot of dirt down. Obviously you shouldn't be coping with this much dirt in one go, but in a, in a week or two weeks it's not unreasonable for you to clean that sort of dirt 
from your house. Obviously, depending how many people live in your house, how big your house is, you are going to eventually need to clean the filter. So I know that this has lost a considerable amount of suction. Towards the end, it was hardly doing anything. It started off okay, but like so many of these pleated filter bagless cleaners, the suction just drops off pretty quickly. Let's have a little unscientific doodah at the end, just to gauge myself, just to feel if I can detect a noticeable drop in suction. Surprisingly, surprisingly, it, it feels, it still feels pretty strong. I wonder if it's, ah, oh, well, I wonder if it's the um, hose that's got itself a bit clogged up. I'm not sure. Through the hose, it's definitely less, it's less suction than we started with. I think the extension tube, if I look through it, the extension tube's okay. Yeah, oop, oop, hold it right there, you can see. That's clear. This nozzle, it's got a few bits caught in it, but nothing, nothing blocking it anyway. I suspect, though, that the filter is blocked. You need to remove the hose to remove the bag compartment on this model. Right, so obviously this, this will be very full. So you could, you know, if we were to look on it, I'm having to put my hands in because it won't come out. If you're going to be looking at it as your glass is half full, then rather half empty. So we could say, oh well, it has actually picked all this up. You know, what can't speak can't lie. Yes, it has. Oh. So all this that was on my floor and my carpets is, well, it's back on the floor now, of course, but it did actually get picked up by the Hoover Spritz. Is that everything, more or less? So, you know, oh, it's snowing quite heavily. Oh. Take a week off work, hoping for some nice spring-like weather, and what are we getting? Snow. So, in fairness, I mean, that's, that's more than its capacity, that. So I have gone above the fill line. So people could say, oh, well, of course, it's, it's going to block up if you do that. Yes, it will. Although some bagless cleaners I've used can continue to maintain more or less all the suction when they're absolutely chock-a-block. But, you know, it's picked them up, but it did... It did take quite a lot of effort on the carpet in the living room to pick that up. So, we're now left with a very dusty room. Dusty hands. A very dusty bin. <laughs> dusty bin, remember that? Three, two, one. Oh, I can't do it. Ted Rogers. Three, two, one. Ooh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Only some of you will know who I'm referring to. Some of you older folks out there who live in the UK. My younger viewers and my American friends and other friends from overseas might know might not know what I'm talking about. But anyway, who cares? Right, let's see. Unlock. Ta da! This is becoming a bit of a habit with uh, some of my videos. I seem to be knee deep in filth in a lot of them. You won't see me knee deep in filth when I'm doing a bagged vacuum cleaner, though, will you? Mmm. No, you see, um, I like both. There are room in the marketplace for bagged and bagless. Right, there is the fine mesh filter. Easy enough to rinse underwater, and that's quite quick to dry, that one. It's these pleated filters that are more difficult to clean and to, do take longer to dry. This, I suspect, yes, is where the fine dust, look at that, the flower. Oh, look at that. This is where the fine dust has obviously been attracted to the filter. All the flower, or the majority of that flower, and the fine dust 
has found its way onto this so-called HEPA filter. Looking inside the HEPA filter, because if it's clean inside, you think, well, at least it's not exhausting that dirt outside to the room. And it is fairly clean, but not spotless. So it has let some of the dust right through, but only very fine dust. There's dust everywhere. Let's have a look on the exhaust filter. Now, the exhaust filter is clean. More or less, I can't, I can't really see. <laughs> there is some dust on it now because that's for my finger. There, that bit of dust there just under my finger. I just put that there. So that wasn't on the filter when I took it out of the machine. So, looking at that, because that's the final filter that the air passes through before it goes back into your room, that is clean. Or as clean as the eye can see anyway. So, I could, you know, you could argue that, I could argue, you could argue, we, anyone could argue that although it doesn't do a very good job of filtering out the dirt in the bin, separating the dirt from the filter, it seems to stop the dirt from going out into your room and that's the most important thing of course if you have allergies, you want to look for a vacuum cleaner that has a good filter. If it says HEPA, don't. Don't, don't take any, you work their word for it. Unless it is a completely sealed system, um, a proper HEPA system. And it has an A rating, at least, hopefully that's a guide for you. If it has an A rating for um, emissions, it should, in theory, be better for you if you have allergies. But no matter how good a filter system is on a vacuum, when you come to empty it, as I've said before, when you come to empty a bagless vacuum, such as this Hoover Spritz, you are going to be exposing yourself to a lot of dirt. And as I've said in earlier videos, it doesn't bother me, I'm quite happy. This dirt doesn't affect me, but it does affect a lot of people. Try and get this filter back in. So, but I don't mind getting myself knee-deep in filth just to show you how a vacuum works. need to lock that, there it is, that's locked back in. Just for a final flurry of the dirt pickup, I don't think there's much else I can do. I might, I'll show you the cleaner on the stairs, show you how it's, it is, that's a good thing about it I suppose, it's light. So that's one positive, it's light. Now I've emptied the bin, now I've tapped the filter, let's see how the suction's improved. It's definitely, it's definitely gone up suction wise. Do you want me to clean all this up before I, before I continue? Shall I? Shall I see what it's going to do? It's probably going to clog again. Let's clean it up, shall we? give it that, but it's not, well there's a bit of mist under here, but it's not clean, it's not clean, not clean to my eyes that's for sure, but if you're not bothered about clean, if you just want surface bits picked up, well, I still don't think it's very good, there are better vacuum cleaners on the market, but anyway, it was cheap, then again, you get what you pay for, don't you? Right then, what I'm going to have to do now is use another vacuum cleaner to clean all this out. And then we'll just take it up the stairs, show you the other tools, and uh, that'll be about the end of this video of the Hoover Spritz. 
Where you find me at the bottom of my stairs with the Hoover Spritz. Welcome, welcome to the bottom of my stairs. Now, I'm here just to see how effective, or how easy anyway, the Spritz is for stair cleaning. There are a couple of things going in its favour. One, it's very lightweight, so it is easy to carry in one hand while you're directing the hose in the other. And the other good feature I like about it is the positioning and the comfort of the carry handle. It's very comfortable to hold. That's where it starts going downhill. You do not get what I would consider a suitable nozzle for cleaning stairs. For me, a stair nozzle needs to be a narrow head, which concentrates the suction. It's easier to manoeuvre, easier to clean the treads and the risers. So you only have two options with the spritz. You could use the HLAB Carpet Extra nozzle, but as you saw from the demo, it's not very good at cleaning. But I suppose if your stairs don't have any visible filth on them, it'll probably remove the surface dust. But to me, it's a little bit big and clunky for cleaning your stairs. Now, the other th nozzle you get with the spritz is just this little crevice nozzle. Now, how long is that going to take you to do the stairs? It will do it, but it's a lot of hard work. This nozzle is useful, of course, for doing around the edges of your stairs and the trim, the wooden trim that most people have between the stair and the wall by flicking the little dust brush. I suppose it'd be quite good for that, but for doing the main area of the stairs, that's no good at all. So basically, well, it's either the end nozzle and doing like that, but that's not, not much better than the crevice tool, or coping with the big nozzle and cleaning your stairs, you know, like that. Now, as you can see, the machine will actually more or less sit on a stair, so you don't even have to carry it all the time. I would keep an eye on it, of course, when you're going up the stairs, just make sure you don't knock it down, but it is fairly, most of the machine is on the stair. So unless you're very clumsy and you pull it down, it should stay fairly stable. So you can clean, well, most of the stairs you could clean. Let's see how far we can get up, actually. The machine on the bottom, in fact, we can actually tilt the machine up slightly, so we'll give it a bit of extra reach. So we can do one, two, three, four, five. Now six, six stairs comfortably with this machine. And then I suppose you could take it up halfway. Seven, eight, nine, ten. About 11 steps. So with the machine, on the halfway mark, you can more or less do up to 11 stairs with it. But because, like I say, it's light, so I can easily hold it in one hand, it's not too much. I bet that's lighter than a lot of ladies' handbags. So I can whiz up the stairs with this. So for stair use, it's okay, as far as convenience goes, and as far as it being lightweight. So before we say so long, farewell, au vida zane, goodbye, we need to see how effective the spritz is at rewinding the very short 5 metre cable. As always, I'm keeping hold of the plug so it doesn't bash into the machine, possibly causing damage. But we can just see, I'll move the machine out of it, to see how effective the machine is at winding up the cable. Well, that's one plus point, I can't really fault that. that uh, Pulled that in pretty quickly, but then again, there's not much cable to pull in. But what cable there is, it did quite a good job of retracting it. Well, that's the end of my demo and review of the Hoover Spritz bagless cylinder vacuum cleaner. No surprises for me, really. It's got a few plus points, but not enough to make it worth buying, in my opinion. The only reason I could see you buying this, if you got it very, very cheap, and I'm talking about under £40, and you just wanted a second cleaner for cleaning your car or doing your stairs, although, as I said earlier, it doesn't have a very good nozzle for stairs, but not as your main vacuum. Unless, hmm, you see, it all depends. It all depends on your domestic situations, how much money you have to spend. If you say lived in a small apartment or flat with mainly 
hard floors, a couple of rugs, it might be okay. The hard floor nozzle doesn't perform badly, it was quite good. Didn't do very well on the large particles, but then again, you know, in my day-to-day -day cleaning, I don't have to clean that sort of mess up myself, so it would. It would give an acceptable result. It just depends how fussy you are, really, you know, how clean you really want your carpets. Do you just want them surface clean, or do you want to think, yeah, they're as clean as I can get them, they're clean right down to the backing. Well, not many carpets are, unless they're brand new. Saying that, you know, I don't know, I don't want to sort of be... I seem to have been... The, the past few reviews I've done on Hoover, I've been bashing the products. And I don't mean to. I don't mean to bash them, but I'm not going to say they're fantastic when they're not. So, you know, I often find myself apologising. I say, oh, sorry, Hoover, it's a thumbs down. But why am I apologising to the manufacturer? They should be apologising to me. I've paid money for their products and they have not come up to, come up to my standard. Or, well, they, nothing would anyway, but they don't come up to a reasonable standard, in my opinion. Some have. And don't get me wrong, I'll, I'm going to be testing a couple of Hoovers in the near future that I found pretty good. I've been pretty impressed with them. So if I do find something that's good, I will say it's good. But if it's not, if it's mediocre, if it doesn't do what I expect a vacuum cleaner to do, then I will say so. So anyway, it's a nice looking little vacuum. But it's, well, after I've given it the full spa treatment, given it a good clean, it's going to be packed away in its box, probably never to see the light of day again. Because I can't see myself wanting to use this. It's too noisy, short hose, short flex, inefficient cyclone system. Oh well, never mind. Better luck next time, Hoover. One day, maybe you'll produce some decent vacuum cleaners. Well, you have. You have done. Check back on my channel, you'll see plenty of reviews. Plenty of reviews on Hoover cleaners, other makes of course. And Hoover to me are hit and miss. I've never really been sort of bowled over by a Hoover product lately. But you never know. Go on Hoover, surprise me. Produce something that is going to make me say wow. So until then, until my next review, that's me. I'm off. I think I need a shower. I certainly need to clean this mess up below me with some other vacuum cleaner, not this one. So anyway, please subscribe if you've found this video useful, interesting, enjoyable. Whatever reason you have for watching the video, I hope you've enjoyed it anyway. So please follow me on Twitter as well. The link is below. You can find out a few bits about me on Twitter. I do post random things as well as a lot of vacuum cleaner related content, including a few exclusive pictures and behind the scenes footage. So if you want a blow-by-blow -blow account of uh, how I make these videos, well, you won't find them on Twitter, but you'll find a few behind-the-scenes uh, pictures, possibly. Anyway, until then, it's goodbye, and I'll see you very soon.